Most of us know how lawn mowers work. They cut grass and leave a swath of shorter lawn behind it. An international group of researchers, meanwhile, including a team from here in BC, have created a microscopic equivalent, the first of its kind. Our science and climate specialist, Darius Madavi, is here to tell us more and why. So, what is a microscopic lawnmower? <laughs> uh, let's start by getting the scale we're talking about. So, Dan and everyone watching, I want you to take a look at your finger. Now, look closely. See the ridges of your fingerprint? Mm -hmm. Between every single one of those, you could fit four of this molecular lawnmower. <whistles> now, according to Chapin Korosek, the lead author on the new paper detailing the breakthrough, that's the scale we're talking about. That's how small the system is, and it's spherical. And now imagine that sphere is now hairy. It has little hairs on it. And at the end of the hairs are tiny little enzymes, little Pac-Man that like to eat things. So how exactly does this work? Well, the lawnmower is a molecular motor, a type of protein that exists in nature. Now, if you think of the motors you're familiar with, they use some kind of fuel or energy, like mm -hmm. gasoline, and do some kind of work, like turning the blades on a lawnmower. Molecular motors do the same thing. Take a look here. The big sphere is the lawnmower Corsac and the team tested as it rolls along the Pac-Men looking proteins on it attached to a specific molecule on a surface. The proteins cut it and the lawnmower keeps rolling forward. Now this is called burnt bridge motion because the lawnmower can't go back the way it came because there's nothing for it to attach mm. to. So once it gets to the end, it's stuck. In other words, it has burnt the bridge. But what's really incredible is that cutting those molecules releases energy, which allows the lawnmower to keep moving forward. So imagine if on your lawnmower, just cutting the grass gave it the energy to keep running. That is amazing. So you mentioned these molecular motors exist in nature. What, what do they do? <laughs> well, let's put it this way. If it weren't for molecular motors, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. They're essential to life as we know it, critical in everything from humans to bacteria, and they arrange the contents of your cells and the stuff between cells, and they do it incredibly efficiently. If we were able to create macro scale motors that were even close to as efficient, we would need a tiny fraction of the power we use now, which Nancy Ford, the principal investigator of the study, illustrated beautifully. If you look at how much work it can do, like how much it could bench press, like relative to its body weight, it's like billions and billions of times greater. So it would be like me being able to bench press, I don't know, like three aircraft carriers or something just, you know, phenomenally ridiculous. Certainly seems like a lot of promise. Are, are there any practical applications on the, on the horizon? Well, we should be careful to set expectations. This was a massive breakthrough, synthesizing a motor from scratch. But this, the, the goal of this work is very much to set a foundation to build on. Now, with that being said, there are a lot of promising directions for this. For instance, we talked about how important these motor proteins are for our cells and our bodies. And as a rule of thumb, when something is that important, it makes for a pretty nasty disease when something goes wrong. So these synthetic molecular motors could one day give us a way to study and maybe even treat those diseases, and they could provide a model system to test how we could stop certain bacteria from dividing or study how viruses like influenza use systems just like this to invade our cells. According to Ford, there are already researchers looking at potential applications for computing too. So there's a lot of promise, but as Korosek told me, their team is very happy with how far they've already come. It's given me such an immense appreciation for how beautiful our cellular systems are uh, because it is extremely hard to create a system bottom up that's totally synthetic that behaves like what nature has developed over millennia of, of, of evolution. It's never boring. Darius Madavi, science and climate specialist. Thanks. Thank you.